<laughs> Good morning, Around the Diamond family. Welcome back to another episode of Around the Diamond. We are in playoff madness. That's what I'm calling it right now. Playoff madness. Playoff madness. These series have been crazy. I don't even know how to contain it. It's just so much. We got a ton to talk about. Let's not waste time. As always, Baseball Bill, how are you? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing, doing okay. On this. I'm doing okay. My cat thinks it's time to join the Around the Diamonds. And so, you know, you might hear me yell and scream when she tries to jump up on my leg with her claws. But besides for that, we're good. We'll be fine She's today. not using your leg as a scratching post? Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. No. Yeah, it's not no. awesome. I mean, it happens every now and then. You just kind of got to go with the punches. It happens every now and again. Every now and then. You got to deal with it. Anyway, so, what have you thought real quick before we get into these series about these series so far in this postseason? Seven come 11. Before we get I, into it, I have a wrong perspective. These series have been nuts. They have. <laughs> they have. There's everything that I predicted. I've been completely wrong. So I'm stopping. I don't even predict it anymore. Don't care. I think predict... Pred- predictions are for the faint of heart. Yeah. There's no reason to talk about it. But let's just get into it. I mean, Idiot. right? Let's get do we, into do it. We, do we want to keep these guys waiting? Do we want to just, like, build the suspense? Or should we just jump in? No, yeah, we could, you know, if we build the suspense, we build the suspense. But they're just not going to, they're going to just tune us out. So we may as well just yeah, jump into let's, it. Let's just let's go into it, you know. Idiot. Let's talk, let, we're, we're going to talk about this first series this AL series has been going insane so far. I mean, we're five games in, and it, it has been a back and forth battle this entire time. I mean, like, let's just talk about the first two games. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're in Astros territory, and the Rangers came out strong. What what were you looking at? What were you seeing from the Rangers? So they came out yeah, pissed off guys. because remember on the last game of the season they got bumped to be the wild card team. So they came out mm-hmm. mad. Um, they came out ready to fight. And it's the battle for Texas. It's the silver boot. It's like, let's go. Let's get it on. And they came out and they blanked the Astros to love. Um, Kate Upton had a great outing, just didn't get run support. Rangers <laughs> held on five to four in the second one. But my gosh, I mean, this series is back and forth, back and forth. And I, I can't emphasize this enough. This series has been made or will be made and broken the rest of the series on shutdown innings, period. You can't get a shutdown in, you're not going to win. No, that, I mean, you got to, you got to blank these guys and you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. I think on either side of the ball. I mean, they, they've really proven themselves, especially in the second three games that, you know, you give them an inch, they're good going to take a mile on either side was the zero was the 2-0 blank to the astros in game one a shock to you no or were you kind no. of expecting a shutout in that first no game? jordan montgomery i know jordan montgomery was good i just didn't realize how good he was and how big he can come up in the postseason um yeah. it wasn't a shock because again the astros you know there are a lot of firepower i think it's sometimes it's a disadvantage starting a best of seven series at home because mm-hmm. You're at home. You have home field advantage. Everybody's fired up for you, right? And at the end of the day, at the tail end of the day, you're looking at it and going, all right, all right, all right, we got this. And, you know, the Rangers said, no, you don't. Yeah. And, I mean, look, if we're we're looking at the series, I mean, the Astros are the only top seed left. Yeah. So, I mean – I mean, look, they are proving that this new playoff format is not a fluke. You just need to come out and play your game. Correct. Correct. You come out and you play your game. In my opinion. Would you also say that their experience? Yeah. But would you also say, well, I'll I'll wait for my next question until we get to the next, to, to to the second three games. So let's go back to, now, the next three games were in Ranger territory. Now they're on a 2-0 win streak. They are hot. They are burning. And they just got shut down in those first two games back at home. Well, so I've been saying this forever. Don't pitch to Jordan. Just walk him. Give him the Barry Bonds treatment. Just walk him. Period. Mm. And nobody's listening to me. Nobody is listening to me. Nobody is listening to me. Mm. And so um Jordan came up big 
in game one. In game two, the entire offense came up big. In game three of that series, actually technically game five of that series, um, the Rangers had it. They had the momentum, and then they gave it right back up. And again, it's all about shutdown needs. There's no defense for a walk. And when you walk yeah. people, especially in the off or in the post postseason, you're literally playing with fire. You have a gasoline can at your yeah. feet, and you're playing with matches in your hands when you when yeah. you're giving up walks in the postseason. Oh, totally. And that makes I, that makes so much sense. I mean, I th- I agree with you. I mean, there are guys, especially in the postseason, that you look at, and you just have to say to yourself, "We got to bite the bullet, and we got to, you know." Like you said, give him that Barry Bonds treatment. Just put him on base. Don't let him. Don't let him make it worse. Control yeah. that situation. You need to control it. I mean, when you have the ability to control what happens with the batter, to take that, take that grace and set yourself up. Yeah. And I'm not saying it was going to be a benefit, but at least you wouldn't. You're mitigating a potential risk of making it worse. Correct. Um. But let's talk about what something Altuve has done. I mean, he's got what, like a hundred game postseason games under his belt at this point in his career, right? Something like that. Yeah, so he's got twenty six home runs postseason, um, most by any player in postseason history. Nope. No, I thought he. I thought that's what I saw last. Nope. Number two, Manny Ramirez is number one with twenty nine home runs in the postseason. Well. <laughs> I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad, of bad predictions here, but I have a feeling that that record's probably going to get broken. Maybe we'll see. Probably soon. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Bing, fingers crossed. Let's go, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> hold that! Hold that! Hold that! You know, hold that lead. Hold, hold that, that lead. lead. Hold that lead. Um, you know, obviously you look at game two and there was just no coming back for the Rangers. I mean, going up by that much and just kind of coasting to the end, you know, all the Rangers could do is, you know, really shrink that demolition that the Astros put on. But then you look at game three. They really tightened it back up. It looked like they were starting to kind of get themselves back to what they were looking like in those first two games. So I'm going to take us to the big picture now. You know, we're we're going to look at the overall here for the rest of the se- for the last two games of this series. Do you think the Rangers did enough to finish in the to finish the lag in the next two or do you think the Astros are going to ride that three game win streak into coasting through the next game and just finishing the series out? So um again, it's too close to call. Uh, right now, if I were going to say advantage, I'd say advantage Astros. Obviously, they're up three games to two, and they're going back home. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, in 2019, they lost every World Series game at home and lost the World Series. Um, they couldn't win at home in 2019 in the, the postseason. Yeah. So the Ranger fans are hoping that that repeats itself. The Astro fans are hoping that that does not repeat itself, obviously. Um, the The difficult right. part... <laughs> Um, the difficult part is, so I'm, I'm suspect that the Rangers could potentially win tomorrow and then anything happens in game seven, right? Game seven is just a crapshoot, but here's the thing. Here's the thing in game three of this series, the Astros had the lead, the Rangers tied it. And then the Rangers went and gave up three runs and fell behind. And ended up losing. Last night's game, Mm. the Rangers went up four to two. Um, Going into the ninth, they walked two batters. Again, there's no defense for a walk, right? They walked two batters. And then Jose Altuve, because there's no height limit in the MLB, Jose Altuve is allowed to play. Um, It's not like a Disneyland ride where you have to be 46 inches. Um, (laughs) Because even at that point, it doesn't happen for him. But Jose Altuve comes up, and he hits a three-run bomb. Okay, again, no defense for a walk. So if guys get on, if you're up four to two in the ninth inning, pitch to contact, 
you're you're facing batters eight, nine, and then Jose Altuve is number one. So right. pitch to contact. Don't get fine. Don't try to pitch around things. That's mm-hmm. what they did, and it bit them in the rear end yesterday. Yeah. And so um, part of also what bit them in the rear end yesterday was Bruce Bochy had to go to his bullpen to get his closer out with two outs in the eighth inning. And then you had that brouhaha in the bottom of the eighth inning, which kept this guy on the bench for 15, 17 minutes before he's being competitive again. Closers want to get in, get out, go home, not sit there for 15 minutes as people are talking about other people's moms and grandmothers. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it was what it was now. Um, also advantage Astros because of the, um, because of the momentum of the fight, right? So, I would also say at this point it's experience for them. I mean, having been there me, all of these years, having a having a fairly strong core group of guys that you've been to the game with for, I mean, at least the last four postseasons, I would say. You know, they probably got a strong, would you say that, the, I, I'm pretty sure that they've got a strong core group that have been there for at least the last four postseason. Yeah, yeah. Season yeah. runs that they they've been, they're dealing with. They know the environments. So, you know, when so, you have. So do some of the Rangers, though. So do some of the yeah. Rangers. But the so. Astros have been more, but the difference between the Rangers experience and the Astros experience is that the Astros guys with experience have been more successful than the Rangers guys with experience and being yeah. successful. Except so, except who plays shortstop for the Rangers? Why am I blanking on this? Who? Because I can't think of it right Corey now. Seager. Ah, uh, that's right. So Corey Seager was in the 17 World Series with Jose Altuve. Mm-hmm. He was in the 18 World Series. He was in the 20 World Series. He was in the playoffs in 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 before he um, was traded, or not traded, but before he signed with Texas. So he has playoff experience. Right. So he's got that one guy. But that's one guy. I mean, let's go now. But, uh, you know, that's one guy. Let's look at the Astro side. You've got Altuve. You've got Verlander. Now you've got, you know, in the last couple of years, you've got Pena, Dubon, you know, I mean, when you look at the, the, no, it's always good to have guys with experience. Having more guys with experience in law, you know, more extended experience no, helps no, set listen, you apart. I I said at the beginning of the season, if you're going toe to toe, managers advantage Bruce Bochy and the Rangers. If yeah. you're going toe to toe, experience advantage Astros. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And the Astros, Astros showed that they don't give up. And the Rangers, literally, this series could be over if the Astros or if the Rangers would have held the lead um, in Game Three and in Game Five. The series is over. But the Astros fought back. You don't give the Astros. The Astros yeah. are so doggone good. It'd be a great day. Yeah. yeah, you can't give the Astros extra outs and giving up free bases and walks and things like that just destroys you just destroys you so it has to be done at the right time for them it just has to be done at the right time the only, you know if the it's only a first if it's a first batter or if it's a second batter you know you've got at least one out no one on base you know okay give up a you can give up a walk you can afford to give up one but you can't afford to give up two and I'm sure Bruce was all over them with that, especially after last night, giving you know putting on the two with Altuve coming up to clear it out. There's, I know Bruce was all over them about it. There's an unspoken rule in baseball. For those of you that have played it, you never lose a game and a girl in the same day, and you never lose a fight in a game in the same day. Yeah. So the fact that the Astros uh, pretty much won that fight and won the game big deal the fact that the rangers lost the fight and lost the game again big deal and so um let's see what kind of fire the rangers have again with this series advantage astros if the rangers can come out and score two or three runs against you know frommer 
you know, this guy, right? If they can go out and and score two or three runs and get him up to 50 pitches in the first two innings, advantage Rangers. If yeah. they're expanding the zone like they did yesterday and getting pitchers off the bump after seven or eight or nine pitches in an inning, they're going to have – they're, they're going to – Better start booking their tee times because they're going to be able to start golfing next week. Yeah. So last 10 sec, 30 seconds. Yep. What are the keys to victory for each of these teams going into these last game to two, possibly two games? Don't be like the Dodgers or Giants. Well, the Giants didn't even make it. So I guess. Okay. Then don't be like the Giants. No, I'm just like the Dodgers. <laughs> at least they made it. <laughs> um, at least they made it. Uh, your keys: don't expand the zone. Look for pitches to hit. Uh, go deep in counts, and don't make mental mistakes. I love it. Short, sweet, to the point, direct. That's how we do it. All right, let's take a let's go and let's take a look at this Philly series. Ah, ah. Let's. I, I see some fanatics eyes popping up on my head so ah. you know ah, we gotta, like we, gotta like we, we gotta talk about this incredible in my opinion probably the better of the two series this national league championship series philly did what philly does at home that i could hear the energy from citizens bank park from my house in those first two games it was incredible that feeling. They they were not let hold anything back. Mm-hmm. They were. I, I mean, going up strong in the first game. I mean, Schwarber and Bryce are still doing, and Castellanos are still doing what they were doing in the that division series, in the championship series, cranking home runs. They're getting on base. They're making good plays in the field. Their short game is good. I, I mean, I, looking at that, looking at them, those first two games. Did, I mean, what were your thoughts? Did you think that it was just going to be a quick four game sweep? Yes, yes, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. One hundred percent, especially after game two. Um, Diamondbacks looked outmatched in game one. Um, they got they got manhandled in game two. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't even a close. It wasn't even close. I mean, Philly the last two years, last year in their NLCS run, this year that you know they're, they're kind of going, they're in that red October mentality again. You know, mm-hmm. do you is there anything you're seeing that could really be like the black eye on this team right now? No, no, you're you're seeing a lot of good pitching. Well. Yes, Mister. Do you want to get into that in the next slide? Yeah, okay. I will. So let's go um, into the next slide. Let's go into the next slide. I will say this one thing real quick. I will say this: Nick Castellanos is showing that he can keep up with Bryce Harper and a few of the other names. I mean, he's he's having a good series. He he's he's actually doing like he's on his hot streak. You yep. know Nick. Nick Nick when Nick goes cold, he's as cold as ice. Yeah. You just want to sacrifice his at bats because he's got nothing. I'm it's sorry, so top end robbery followers. Sam was not supposed to do karaoke today, but we're glad that he did. Um if you could all put in the comment hashtag Sam keep your day job, that would be <laughs> awesome. I love my day job, so I'm totally fine with it. But <laughs> you know, but Nick. Yeah. When he's cold, like I said, he's he's ice cold. cold ice. But yeah. when he is hot, he's like lava flowing down a mountain. He yeah. is just like there's not a ball that gets past him or gets thrown at him that he's either not catching when he's on defense or he's not hitting. You put it in a zone, he's getting that ball in play. Yep. Just is. But then we take it back to Arizona, and Arizona kind of showed us what they showed us throughout the year. You know, their their small ball game, their heart, their you know their energy, their fire. You know, I think being home definitely played a role in that. But what was it about the last two games in in Arizona that kind of 
gave them that ignition? Uh, the Diamondbacks? Yeah. Uh, the home crowd was one of it. And the fact that in game three, nobody could score. And so, again, this goes back to shutdown innings. I think it's the top of the seventh. And Arizona scores. I mean, uh, Philly scores to to start the scoring. And then Arizona comes up and scores a run to tie it in the bottom of the seventh. And they mm-hmm. win it in the bottom of the ninth. Right. And so, I mean, legit, it was, again, shut down inning. You have a game where nobody scored through six. You finally score in the seventh. I got it. Shut it down in the bottom of the seventh. Take the energy and the momentum right yeah. out of the building. But they didn't do it. Yeah. And then, of course, okay. and then, of course, this guy, both games, he, he hasn't done anything. Hmm. So I am not missing Craig Kimbrell in a Dodgers uniform. You know, I said this before I said this before the show. Craig Kimbrell is always very good for one third of the season. That one third he's good, he's lights out. You look at him and you're like, this man is there is no question. They said this year, the beginning of the season, he was lights out, and they said, This man's gonna be the closer of the year. There's no question about it. He was unfreaking stoppable. Yes, I made sure I said freaking and I didn't use a curse word. There you go. Um <laughs> But then you got to that second third of the season, right when we got towards the All Star break, and he started to get a little loosey, and you didn't really know where you know what was happening, something. And then after the All Star break, when you got to that third, that last third of the season, you it was kind of like a just like spitting dice. You figure out what you're going to get when you put him out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you, you never knew. So you know, I, I think. For me, it was just exciting to see this Diamondbacks team come back in those last two games and just have fun playing the game. And I think that's kind of what they did in this moment. Personally, I think they said, you know what? We've been so caught up in all of this craziness with the championship and the spotlight and all this stuff. We just need to play our game. We got to go back to having fun. We got to put that energy that we've been putting out there all year and just let it go. Who cares? We made it. We did more than we were expected to do. Amen. And I and I think that's why the Phillies last year were so good in the postseason. The Phillies were not expected to make it to the postseason last year. No, no. In game fives today. So But they got there and they said you were expected to do at this point. It is just Yeah. No, and I'm looking forward to um I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out tonight. Because that's well, game let's talk five. about that. Let, let, let's talk about that. So we got we've got at least two more games in this series. Mm-hmm. At least two more. You got one tonight, one on Monday, and then potentially one on Tuesday. We got one more in in if they win tonight, it's it's gonna be really interesting. It no matter who wins tonight, the next game is gonna be interesting. I think if the Diamondbacks win tonight. You know, Philly's going to have a really hard time. But, you know, I mean, I, I'm excited on this one. I'm so pumped because this one, it, it really could go either way. What do you think? Um, I still think advantage Philly. I think Philly's going to, I think they're going to be ticked off at what happened last night um, and come back out. It. I'll tell you this, advantage, mm-hmm. advantage, whoever wins tonight that's advantage for the series because if Phillies lose yeah. tonight, they have to go back home and win two, which that home crowd will, will push them and will them through. But one simple mistake or one, you know, experience with him and you're out of the, uh, out of the series. And then you have the diamondbacks um, in the world series, but I think Philly will bounce back today. What about you? What do you think? You know, for me, it's, it's so hard because you know, I have someone who I love tremendously that's a diehard Phillies fan. And I'm obviously, you can see, in much support of them right now. They're, they're right. really doing well. Um, But this Diamondbacks team in the last two games, again, they just showed me energy that they were, that they had during the season that made them so good. And they're bringing that energy back. now that's making ignition reignite so i mean i agree i think it is whoever wins this game tonight 
obviously whoever wins the game tonight, it's going to make a big impact going back into game six. Mm-hmm. If the, if the Diamondbacks win, it's all hands on deck for Philly on Monday. There's no question. I think if Philly wins tonight, they're going to ride the energy of the fans back at home to close it in six. Yeah. If they don't win tonight, Philly fans are going to let them have it on Monday to drive them to win game six, to make game seven, the you know, a battle. Yeah. So, you know, I still think it's going to be Philly that comes out. I just think their experience being there in this exact position last year is what's going to help them get there. Plus, Aaron. Arizona is young. They have got sir, over the next couple of years. I have no doubt in my mind we will be seeing the Diamondbacks in contention spots over the next three to five, if not seven years with the crew that they've got. Um, I just think at this moment, it's the Phillies series to lose and the Diamondbacks to win. Yep. You know what makes me excited about that comment, Sam? That means that the Giants can secure fourth place for the next five. To oh, seven years. so funny! I'm thinking more the do- the Padres eventually will because the Giants are going to go ham this off season. But we, Bill and I, are going to get on a podcast in the next week or two, and we're going to talk about that because I got some I got some fire in my belly over the Giants well, and what they a, plan on their it, doing. Yeah, it it'll be after the World Series, but you're gonna ha- I'm gonna have to catch up with you because you're gonna be a jet setter here pretty quick. That's true. That's true. So less than a Sam, month. Sam, Sam just wants to like record these during the season it? and then says juices. I'm out. Sam, with the last three minutes, what do we want to talk about? I have to take What are we talking about the last three minutes? You put together such a schedule okay. on the podcast this week that I don't know how people are going to be able to contain their excitement. So you well, have to tell people how to contain it so they can just release it at the opportune moment. That's right. So Danielle is on the podcast. She's a, she's She grew up a Dodgers fan. She now lives in KC, and she's become a Royals fan. We met her and her husband when we uh, were in the suite in, uh, in Kansas City. Fantastic lady and great family. Um, Attic Sox is coming on to talk about the Red Sox season and what to anticipate for 2024. Peter is a Phillies fan. He goes by Sheffield Shuffler. He will be on on Wednesday. Um, was a Cubs fan. Now he's a Phillies fan. He lives in your neck of the woods, Sam. Jake is our, our Dodger fan. He's going to come on and talk about, he used to work for the club. He's going to talk a little bit about what the 2023 season looked like and where there were some successes and some failures. And then Sandy is a new guest to the podcast. Um, and she's going to talk race. So Danielle, Attic Sports, and Sandy are all new guests to the podcast. So we got three new ones this week. Oh, love it. I wish I, I welcome to the clubhouse. Welcome yes. to the top fan family. It's going to be awesome to have you there. And then you got, you got one scheduled around one scheduled in the leagues, but you're making some guest appearances this week, which are always exciting to see you, you know, spreading the top fan love across the spec. Of yeah. Baseball so Bur- fandom. So bourbon and baseball pod um, has invited me on. Uh, that's Susie. Uh, and then Bleacher Brothers, AJ has me on this Wednesday. We're going to talk about the playoffs and hopefully we're going to talk about, you know, who's in the World Series by then, but we'll figure it out. Yes. Uh, and then, Sam, you can turn the page to the next one. Well, before we get to the next one, we also have to make, you know, you made this announcement yesterday. Yep. I just kind of want to reiterate it again. We, you know, you community and we're really, you're really growing top fan rivalry. You brought on someone to the top fan rivalry crew to really help build the exposure. Okay. Uh, Megan has been hot. You know, you brought Megan on who is a diehard Mets fan out of Texas. Big love for big love for her Mets. Sorry. So sorry for them. Um, and at times, sorry for her that she has to be a Mets fan, but she's <laughs> brought, been brought on as the director of marketing. So she's going to be doing a lot of great things for Top Fan, really getting the name out there more and more as Bill has done so much. So just wanted to congratulate Megan on being brought into the Top Fan rivalry hierarchy, so to speak. But yes. she's going to be doing a lot of stuff for this next event that's coming yes, up in is. January. <laughs> we yes, are, she is. So. We are so- just so close. 
I bought my okay. plane ticket, my man. I bought it. I'm All going. Right. All right. You're you're there. Yeah. Oh, the, I mean, I'm as close to being there as already there. As already booked. Yeah, exactly. And so, yes, there, congratulations everybody. to Megan for joining the staff of Top Down Ravelry. More to come. Um, this Vegas thing, you guys don't want to miss this. So here, I'm going to tell you how to save money. Just keep it between you and I, though, okay? So here's how you're going to do this. You can pay $150 a person to go to the event. Okay, now, what we have planned and what we're going to release in this next week, just so that you know what we have planned, if you did it on your own, it's well past $300 an individual. Well past, closer to $400. Um, but, you know, that is what it is. We are going to have some fun out there. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Go on to topfanrivalry.com, click on the team store, buy your ticket, $150. If you want to save some money, okay, you can go on to Top Fan Rivalry, register in the locker room for $58. $58, you can register in the locker room. And Sam's going to give you a code in a second for that where you can get 10% off. And then you can go buy your ticket in the locker room store for Vegas, and it's discounted down to $75. So you can either pay 130 or 150 to go to Vegas. Either way, if you pay the 130, then or roughly 130, then what you end up having through that is you end up having a bunch of time in the locker room in the clubhouse. So um, it's a good time. So Sam, is there nothing wrong with after that? Anybody can get? a lot of great. There's a lot of great stuff you have in the locker room. I yeah. mean, I strongly encourage you to go and do it because yeah. then 50 percent off for the 58 dollars to get 50 percent off of this amazing fan fest is going to be totally worth it in my opinion but the code you need to use is fat cat no fat cat. oh no that changed it changed yeah, that 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 code doesn't exist oh that code doesn't then, then exist. i have bad information so you gotta tell me what's this new code what what's the code that you normally use for stuff oh the code i use you mean atd yeah, yeah. i mean i use atd all day all night yeah for around the diamond, exactly. Use ATD. The fat cat code does not exist. Uh, that was an old code, and it actually wasn't working. So don't was, worry about a, that. Do not use that. Use ATD. We wanted to fake you all out with that code. I was testing exactly. every single one of you listening to this. So if you go and you do fat cat, you're sorely mistaken. You'll never see it. Yes, use the code around the diamond. ATD is what you want to use. That will get you fifty percent off. Your fanfare ticket, your fan ticket to Fan Fest. Make sure you're there. Buy your ticket soon. Airline prices aren't going down; they're only going up. So you got to make sure you sure. get there soon because Bill has got a ton of stuff planned. But as always, make sure you are checking out topbandrivery.com for always new articles, new podcasts, and new merch that's coming out. Bill is already planning watch parties for next year. Me and him are in contact about some watch parties that we're going to start setting up on the East Coast, so you are not going to want to miss it. Any final comments for the fans out there? Bill? No, go enjoy the weekend. Go enjoy some baseball. We'll see you when we're talking about the World Series edition. Oh, yeah, it is going to be great. As always, thank you for joining us this week, and we will see you next week on The Field. Have a good one, guys.